Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying who we are in Christ. And we have been going through the New Testament, reading the in Christ scriptures. And these are phrases that we find in the New Testament that start with the words in or by, through, with, or of. So in Christ, in him, in whom, by Christ, by him, by whom, of Christ, of him, of whom, through Christ, through him, through whom, and then other phrases of that nature, by his blood, in his name. All of these reveal to us who we are in Christ, what we have been given in Christ, and what we can do. In Christ. So it's what you are, what you have, and what you can do in Christ. Hallelujah. So let us continue. We're reading through the New Testament, looking at the scriptures with these phrases. And in case you've missed any of these broadcasts, let me do a little review. Also, because, you know, time passes, you might miss some of these. You need to hear them again. Also, as I've said before, you need to mark these scriptures in your Bible. So if you're busy right now doing something else, fixing your hair, driving down the road, then this evening, sit down with your Bible, open your Bible, look up these scriptures and underline them and circle the key words that identify what you have in Christ, what you've been given in Christ, what you can do in Christ, and meditate on these things and develop this powerful in Christ revelation in you. Hallelujah. So let me just read for you some of the scriptures that we've already covered. Colossians 3.3, 3, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. Christ in God. That's important. You have to realize you are hidden with Christ in God. That means everything that Christ has provided is now available to you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, we looked at Romans 3.24. You are justified by his grace. You have redemption in Christ. So you're justified. That means made righteous. And you have redemption. Praise the Lord. Romans 6.23, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, eternal life. Now, that Greek word is the word zoe, and it's more than length of life. We think of eternal as just length, but actually the word zoe in the Greek is also the quality. It's not only length, it's also quality of life. It's the God kind of life you have in Christ. You have God's kind of life in Christ. Praise the Lord. We looked at Romans 8, 1, no condemnation. Romans 8, 2, free from the law or the curse of sin and death. Romans 8, 39, the love of God. First uh, Corinthians 1, 2, sanctified. First Corinthians 1, 4, grace. First Corinthians 2, 16, you have the mind of Christ. First Corinthians 15, 19. First Corinthians 15, 22. And then yesterday we finished with Galatians 2, 4. This matter arose because some false brothers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom. Mark the word freedom in your Bible. The freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. That is so important because we are free. We've talked about this before. We're free from sin. We're free from the curse. We're free from the spiritual bondages, the mental bondage, mental bondages, emotional bondages, financial bondages, relationship bondages, everything that came through sin and death. We are free from. Hallelujah. And then we also read Galatians 314. He redeemed us in order that the blessing, the blessing, you need to study the blessing, the blessing given to Abraham. It started with being given to Adam in Genesis 1, 28, when God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The blessing brings the anointing to multiply. 
And then God gave the same blessing to Noah in Genesis 9, when it says God blessed Noah and his sons and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And then God gave that blessing again to Abraham. And in Abraham now, all who are in Christ receive the blessing. So it's the same command that was given to Adam. Be fruitful, multiply, increase in number. Hallelujah. So Galatians 3.14, he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. So that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. The promise of the Spirit is all the promises of God. And it is the blessing given to Abraham that now comes to all of us who are in Christ. And then Galatians 3.26. Let's go on. 3.26. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, a lot of these words that we are finding here, who we are in Christ, we will be doing more study or we have already done more study on these words because this reveals to us who we are, what we have and what we can do. And so we will be talking again about being sons of God. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And then Galatians 3.28, 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are one together and we are one in him because as we already have read, he is in us. We are in him. We are one in him. He is the head. We're the body. Well, the head and the body are all one. They're not two. They're one. Hallelujah. So we are one together and one in him. Ephesians. Now, let's go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 3. 1, 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. There's the blessing again. Underline the blessing. Has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And as we've said before, you know, sometimes, a lot of times, religious tradition follows what we've talked about, the sinful nature, the fallen nature mentality, the mentality of being, oh, we're just unworthy, we're no good, we're just sinners saved by grace. No, you're not a sinner saved by grace because you cannot be both a sinner and saved. You were a sinner, now you're saved. And you are now a new creation, the old has gone, the new has come. You are not both a sinner and saved. You are saved when you're in Christ. Now we see that we have the blessing in Christ, but every blessing, it says every spiritual blessing, that's because everything starts in heaven and it manifests in our lives on earth. Do you remember the Lord's Prayer? Many Christians can quote the Lord's Prayer, but have not given much thought to what it means. Remember, it says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed or holy be your name. Thy kingdom come, your will, what? Be done. Where? On earth, like it is in heaven. In other words, he said, may the same thing be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if you did not hear the series we did on the kingdom of God, I recommend you need to hear that. It is a very foundational teaching that every Christian needs, but most Christians don't understand. Most Christians do not understand the kingdom of God. It's just a phrase and it's mysterious. But we talked about it in depth, what it is. It was actually a seven-week series, a seven-week 
series of teaching defining what is the kingdom of God, what is in the kingdom, what is available in the kingdom, how do we operate in the kingdom, how do we receive the kingdom of God. You need that. It will be a foundation for your Christian walk, your Christian life. Go back to that when we talked about the kingdom of God. But what we saw was that everything is in God's kingdom and it manifests in our lives in the natural realm. Right here, wherever you live, whether you're in Colorado or on the other side of the world listening to this on the Internet. Wherever you are, you can have all the kingdom of God blessings manifesting in your life in the natural realm. If you're in Colorado, if you're in Denver or Colorado Springs or Longmont, or if you're in India or Ghana, it doesn't matter. The blessings in the kingdom of God can manifest in your natural life, in the physical life. It's to be a physical manifestation of the kingdom of God blessings. Hallelujah. Well, I need to hurry here. Ephesians 1, 4. Ephesians 1, 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. He chose us in him. There's the in him phrase. What are we in him? Holy and blameless. If the devil tries to tell you that you are to be blamed for anything wrong, any sin, the devil is a liar. You're washed in the blood of Jesus, and in him, you're blameless. You are blameless of all wrongdoing when you receive Jesus Christ, and you do that through repentance. Repentance is how you get forgiveness, not ignoring your sin, but repenting, saying, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. And we continue to do that. You know, First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Now, that is speaking to born again Christians. That is not speaking to the unsaved. I've heard some people say, well, that's talking to the unsaved. No, it's not. It's talking to the brothers. It's talking to the church. And we must confess our sins. But confessing your sins is what is putting them on the scapegoat. Remember when we talked about the scapegoat? Jesus is our scapegoat. And the high priest laid his hands on the head of the scapegoat. And by confessing the sins of Israel, he transferred the sins of Israel to the scapegoat. So how do you transfer your sins onto Christ, which he already bore them for you, but for you to get rid of them and be free of them is by confessing them. Confessing it, Lord Jesus, I was wrong, I sinned. You know, that takes humility. Pride cannot say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Pride refuses to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. But humility says, I'm sorry, I was wrong, forgive me. I confess my sin in Jesus' name. And you put it through that confession, you put it on Christ, and then he has borne it for you, and you are now blameless and free. This is how you get rid of sin, by confessing it and putting it on Christ. Then you are free from it. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1, 11. Ephesians 1, 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Now, we talked about inheritance in the Kingdom of God series. If you miss the Kingdom of God, go back and listen. We talked about inheritance. You have an inheritance. You are an heir of God, and you have an inheritance in Christ. Hallelujah. And because that verse starts about, starts with the words, In whom, in him, in whom we have received an inheritance. You are an heir. You have an inheritance. Even if you don't have any natural family that leaves you an inheritance, you are an heir of God. And you have an inheritance from God. Hallelujah. And Ephesians 1.13 
Ephesians 1, 13, you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed you are marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So in him, in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit and you have the seal of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 2, 6. 2, 6, and God raised us up with Christ. There's the with Christ. What are we? Raised up and seated with him in the heavenly realms in Christ. See, I said you have to identify not only with Jesus' death, but with his resurrection and exaltation to the right hand of God. Now, in Christ In him, you are also seated at the right hand of God. You are also seated with him in the heavenly realms. You have a seat of authority in the heavenlies. Now, when you pray, when you release your faith, you need to take it from that seat of authority in the heavenlies. You declare and decree with faith and authority. From your position, seated with him in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. And Ephesians 2, 7, 2, 7. In order that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. Now, what is his grace? That is God's arm extended to you with it's his open hand, open handed to you. His intense desire to give you liberally and lavishly everything he has, which is everything you need. He gives it to you open handed, open handed, liberally to you. His incomparable riches of his grace, his open handedness expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So you receive his open hand to you, extended to you, the incomparable riches that he has. He wants to give you everything he is. He wants to give you everything he has. He shares with you everything of himself. He does not hold back. Hallelujah. He is extending it to you. Now you receive it. That is his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And then Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ. So we are workmanship of God. We are the handiwork of God. We are created in Christ. For a purpose to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You are beautiful because you are God's workmanship. God doesn't make anything ugly and God doesn't make anything deformed. There are no spiritual deformations. No. In the spirit, in Christ, you are perfect and beautiful. Hallelujah. And Ephesians 2.13. Ephesians 2.13. But now... In Christ Jesus, there you are again, in Christ, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ. How do you draw near to God? Through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. But remember, you are no longer alienated. You are no longer A foreigner, you are now reconciled, you are now rejoined and reconnected and brought near to God through the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. You stay near to him because he has reconciled you to himself and brought you near to himself. Ephesians 4.32, 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as In Christ, God forgave you. God forgave you in Christ. So now in Christ, you can forgive everyone who has wronged you. That is so important. You cannot do it under the fallen nature. That's why 
when Christians continue to live with the mentality. You see, the spirit is reborn, but the mentality has to be renewed in the image of its creator. And if you don't renew your mind and your mentality, then you continue to live, even though you are reborn and a new creation, you continue living like you're the old man. You still live like you're the fallen, sinful man. But you're not. That's why you need the renewing of your mind. Getting the mind of Christ. Getting the in Christ mentality. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a new creation in Christ. The old is gone. The new has come. And in that mentality, you can forgive everybody who has wronged you. You see, it's in the fallen mentality that you say, I can't forgive them. I just can't forgive them. They hurt me too bad. They wronged me. It was so wrong. I can't forgive them. That's in the fallen nature. That's the fallen nature, the fallen man. You're not that fallen man anymore. Now you are in Christ. And in Christ, you can forgive. Because Christ, in Christ, God forgave you. Now in Christ, you have the power to forgive others. You have the power to forgive in Christ. Now stop trying to do it in your own strength, in your fallen nature, but do it in Christ. And that is by faith. And you say, by faith. In Jesus' name, I forgive so-and-so. I forgive my brother. I forgive my dad. I forgive my uncle. I forgive my ex-husband or my ex-wife. I forgive that person that used to be my best friend, but they betrayed me. You can forgive when you're in Christ Jesus. Don't do it in yourself. Do it in Christ. In Christ, you are empowered empowered to forgive now you are also commanded to forgive and in forgiveness you are released from the past if you don't forgive you are bound to your past but if you forgive you are released from your past to go forward in victory. It may have been something so bad it hurt you, but it is only still crippling you today if you are in unforgiveness. It will still cripple you. It will still bind you if you don't forgive. But if you forgive, you walk away free. You walk away free. Your past has no power over you when you forgive. Just like when God forgives you of your sins and your past sins don't rule you anymore. When you are in Christ, you are forgiven. Then in the same way, the wrongs that other people did to you, how they hurt you, how they may have abused you or they may have betrayed you. They are still holding you in bondage if you don't forgive. You are chained to your past. You know, that's like being chained to a dead corpse. You know, that's terrible to think about being chained to a corpse. Well, that's what you're doing if you don't forgive. But if you forgive, you walk away free into your future which is bright and brilliant and victorious, you can be free from even the, 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 the things that, the results of what they did. You can be healed in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. You can be healed even in your finances and in your relationships if you go forward forgiving the past and going forward in your forgiveness and new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And you might say, but Cherry, I just can't. I can't forgive. Yes, you can, because you are in Christ. In Christ, you can do all things. Glory to God, which we're going to get to that scripture later. But you can, because in Christ, God has forgiven you. 
So in Christ, you forgive others. You see that? In Christ, God forgave you. So in Christ, you forgive others. How do you do it? It's all back to even receiving all the promises. How? By faith. So you do it by faith. How do you ask Jesus to come into your heart? By faith. How do you ask him to forgive you of your sins? By faith. How do you ask him to wash you in the blood? By faith. So how do you forgive others? By faith. You declare it, first of all, with your mouth, in the name of Jesus, by faith, I forgive And then name the person. Yeah, put their name in there. Name them. I forgive so-and-so. Name them. And you say, by faith, I forgive. And then you say, I cancel and wipe out their sin against me by faith under the blood of Jesus. Under the blood. The blood of Jesus washes away all sins. Glory to God. And it's by his blood that you also forgive others. We'll talk about this again some more. Now, before we close, I want to invite you again to be a partner with us in this radio ministry. If it's blessing you and encouraging. You You can go to my website to give online at victoriousfaith.co or you can write to me at Victorious Faith, P.O. Box 509, Eastlake, Colorado, 80614. Now join me again next week and remember, God loves you, you're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.